as a department we're welcoming the, um, the new practical endorsement with a view to increasing the number of practicals that we can do. And it's not coursework but you've still got that intensiveness. I think the students will get a lot from this. You don't always start off fully confident in practicals and doing several of them throughout the year and keeping track of them and seeing where you've gone wrong and how to improve is better than having the pressure of just doing one big project and having a lot of riding on it. It's a lot less stress for the pupils and again there's support from the teachers. The students that I spoke to at my college uh, were really pleased about that. They didn't like the current system. They felt that it was an artificial um, pressure put on them that if on the day you know they didn't do so well that was it. Our students uh, found the, uh, the new way of assessment uh, easier to handle. It's much more relaxed. It's over a longer time period. I still have some things about how we're going to implement one or two of the practicals, but generally I think it's going to be fantastic. And it's something which they, they enjoy, you know, it, it builds upon the theory. What we don't want to do is to put practicals in a straitjacket so that teachers and students don't have freedom to apply investigative approaches. So we certainly don't want to go down the route of them being controlled assessment style tasks with very, very restricted mark schemes. The skills can be gathered together um, slowly. It doesn't matter if they make mistakes from time to time. I wouldn't expect a, a student necessarily just to achieve it on one occasion. It's not something to hide that you've gone wrong. I think that's, that's kind of fundamental to the whole idea is that it is completely holistic, I think was the word that was mentioned earlier on, and it is over the course of the two years. Praising yourself and then criticising yourself as well is quite difficult <coughs> to be really honest with yourself and I think sometimes students can be harsher to themselves than the teacher would be. Initially we brought out these tick lists and the big concern from our point of view is well this is going to be unmanageable in the long term just to kind of tick every single time a student does something if there's four or five boxes each time we kind of got the wrong end of the stick because really it's all about the emphasis switching on to the student. So they carry out the experiment, they look at kind of how they, where they've gone wrong, what they've done, and then they formatively assess how they've performed themselves. So they are completely active in the kind of assessment. After a while, I sort of came round on the idea because you know exactly where you are, you know exactly what to work on, and you know exactly what you do well. Students already work in pairs on practical work, so initially I was a bit apprehensive about <coughs> that. Um, how do you know that it's that student that's doing the practical that you are assessing? But uh, I got around that, I think I got around it anyway, by making one of those pair of students responsible for, say, setting up the equipment or for taking the readings, and that would be the student that I would be assessing during that session. What I think the students really like is the fact that this, <coughs> this idea of a lab book, certainly our staff really bought into this idea, the fact that each student will have this evidence that they can pick up over the course of the two years, show development, show this formative idea of how they've improved over the course of the two years and they can take it along to UCAS. It's not necessarily it needs to be neat or uh, meet like subtitles or anything. Maybe see for the next practical where you've gone wrong or to reflect at the end of the year and I think that um, gives the teacher a, um, a direct source into the way you're thinking and if anything that's more important because if everyone writes in the same formatted way the teacher won't be able to see the individual thought process of the students. My understanding of what the project is about, the, the, the new yes, uh, yes. is it's direct assessment. You sort of hinted that you were assessing by looking at lab notebooks, which is an indirect assessment. Your judgment of their competence in a skill comes will from be lab in notebooks. class. No, it will be in class. So you'll actually see Yes, the yes. And I think it goes further than that as well, that the students can also use the lab book in the revision. Because if the practicals are going to be assessed on the written exam, they can look back and see what they actually did. We were confident with our ability to apply the CPAC as a department. There were things that came up that will need clarification, but nothing major. If we are solely relying on written procedures, it may disadvantage certain students. Uh, those who, for example, might be dyslexic and so on. It wasn't like we had to do anything differently. It, it literally just like, well, I'm doing this next week and that corresponds to this criteria, so I can, I can just literally map that over there and it, and it, and it just kind of slotted into place, which was, which was really quite nice. And CPAC 2 was mentioned earlier, the investigative approaches idea. And I think that's the one where there's, there's most kind of well, questions on clarity, really, in terms of how we actually develop that. And 
if the exam boards can put something together in terms of um, you know suggested investigative approaches for that part, that I think that would be, certainly be really useful because the the others are really quite straightforward and obvious. The university should make clear that even if the subject is not a science or engineering one, you still need to have the pass. We find it almost impossible to envisage that we would not specify um, the practical pass component at the offer stage. It might be better to take a student who has, for example, a B and a pass in the practical than an A and a fail. And they saw it open their eyes to what was out there and I think that's what we need to do is open students, science students eyes up to what is going on. It's saying I can safely do practicals now, I know how to use equipment, I could go into a lab and understand it, use instructions, things like that. It's rewarding, not so much grades, grades wise but knowledge wise.